levers forward. That's the start of the downhill part of the track, and you're in control of your sled from that point all the way to the bottom of the hill. On the way down, you control your speed and your brakes, and you have to maintain a 180-foot distance between the sleds today. There's signs along the uphill track to help you judge that 180-foot distance. Please keep your hands and feet inside the sled at all times. Keep your seatbelt fastened. Don't stop on that track unless it's an emergency. Can everyone pull back hard? Both handles can be brake check, please. And if you understood those instructions, I just need a thumbs up. So just like a regular roller coaster, you get pulled up by the cable, your handles don't work on the way up, just make sure you press the handles all the way forward as you pass our lift attendant, and then you're in control on the way down. Nothing to it. Okay. Hold that run. The, where, where, see what you got. <laughs> press forward. Oh, now this one's making music? Oh. There you go. Have fun. Thank you. As you leave the Stewart Grid on this historic ride, take a look to your left at the main building that is one of the most diverse sports facilities in the world. In the winter, it will accommodate the sliding sports along with biathlon and Nordic skiing, and then in the summer, it will turn into a hiking and mountain biking center. Now look down to your left, which is the finished straightaway of the old sliding track that was used for both the 1932 and 1980 Winter Olympic Games. If you think of historic sports venues from around the world like Wimbledon for tennis or Indianapolis, for auto racing, this track on the left is world famous in its own right. Nine decades ago, baseball had Babe Ruth and bobsledding had Billy Fisk, who won the gold medal here in 1932 in the four-man bobsled event. The award ceremony took place not far from where you are now. And listen to Fisk comment on winning the gold and the cup. I'm very glad to have been able to win this cup for America, and I hope it stays in this country. Two Lake Placid residents, Curtis and Hubert Stevens, won the two-man gold medal in 1932 games, and listen to what they said after they won their gold medal. Very wonderful trip down the slide. However, it's the thrill of the sport rather than the victory that really counts in the upset. If you look to the left, you will see the new cross-country and biathlon courses that were just built to accommodate the 2023 World University Games that will be staged in Lake Placid. This event will enrich Lake Placid and New York State's Olympic legacy into a second hundred-year span. This global event will be staged over 11 days with 13 different sports competing involving 600 universities, 60 nations, and a total of 3,000 athletes, delegates, and officials. The event was staged previously in Lake Placid in 1972, and then it was called the Kennedy Games. And yes, Jackie Kennedy did attend. We would like to review some of the riding instructions with you. This is an active participation ride. Remember, you're in full control of the ride once you have passed the attendant building at the top. You will be able to control your speed with the brake levers. Simply push the levers to go and pull the levers to slow down or to brake. Keep your eyes forward at all times. Remember, it is your responsibility to slow down and brake for slow or stopped riders. Maintain 80 feet between you and the cart in front of you. You should increase your distance to 180 feet for wet conditions. There are signs along the uphill ride to assist you in judging 80 feet and 180 feet. Thank you. The Mount Van Hovenberg Olympic Bobsled Run is nationally significant for its association with the 1932 Winter Olympics and for its role in the development of bobsledding in the United States. Also for its association with the development of Lake Placid as a center for winter sports in the U.S. The Bobsled Run was constructed in 1930 after Godfrey Dewey was successful in convincing the International Olympic Committee to bring the 1932 Winter Olympic Games to Lake Placid. Dewey was the son of Lake Placid Club founder Melville Dewey, who founded the Dewey Decimal System in Libraries. After persuading the IOC that Lake Placid could offer facilities equal to the best European sites, Dewey was instrumental in securing funding, identifying event sites, and participating in the design and construction of sports facilities. With the latter, the bobsled run was considered critical, and Dewey promised the committee a first-class run. Despite America's inexperience with bobsled tracks, Dewey succeeded by securing the service of Stanislas Zelensky, a renowned German course designer who designed a course that was radically different from its European counterparts. After the American team won two gold medals and one silver in 1932 at the bobsled competitions, the sport was previously unknown in America, but now it captivated the country's interest. 
I looked straight up in front of you to the top of the mountain they call Mount Van Hovenberg. Way up there was the original start of the 1932 bobsled competition. The track then was one and a half miles in length. It was shortened in 1939 to one mile. And if you get a chance, there is a great trail to the top where you can see the remnants of the old 1932 track. And when you get to the top, a breathtaking view awaits you. If you look to the left, that building is where the start was for the 1980 Winter Olympic Games bobsled competition. On your right is the new bobsled luge and skeleton start buildings built in 1999 for the Winter Goodwill Games. And further right, you will see the ski jumps. Whiteface Mountain, the Olympic Arena downtown Lake Placid, and that's where the greatest moment in sport of the 20th century took place in 1980, when a bunch of USA college hockey players beat the mighty Russians in the famous Miracle on Ice. You might have seen that movie Miracle with Kurt Russell. Keep your seatbelts buckled at all times. You will soon be entering the downhill track. Push the brake levers forward now and keep them forward until you have passed the attendant building. All right. Woo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now get ready for your ride down Woo! this is track. You'll be going over the top track used for both the 1932 and 1980 Winter Olympic Games. Attention. And they're off. Down oh my the long straightaway above curve one. Taking the curve. Taking curve two. Taking curve two. Oh my god! On the little side. Cliffside is it? To a cliff side. Ah! On the way to curve six. Approaching ah! curve six. Ah! Take the curve through. Ah! On the long straightaway oh ah! above curve seven. This is where the sleds really started to accelerate. Ah! Ah! Approaching seven. Taking the curve through seven. Now below us is the straightaway to curve eight. Ah! On the way to Big Shady. Ah! The big curve at Shady. Through. And on the long straightaway above Little Rock, ah! Shady was one of the most famous oh curves in the world. The reason they called it Shady, it always was covered in shades to protect it against the sunlight. The G-forces in that curve. Ah! Zigzag area and for oh good reason through zigzag and on the way to curve 15. Taking the curve 15 and on the long straightaway above the finish curve. Ah! And now oh my god! A Chrysler. Oh Only my two gosh. Olympic trucks <laughs> ever had one of these built, including the new one in Beijing coming up. <laughs> now you're approaching the finish curve, <laughs> taking the curve through and down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 